Okay, in this quick tutorial, I'm just going to show you the simple setup for this little simulation here. This is that yellow cube that I had from before, and it still has a, let's see, I have a different state. There's a state. It still has a ray sensor associated with it, so with anything giving within two Blender units of it, it's going to do something. And what it's doing, it's going through this Python script called RayState1. And then that goes to the message to, that it's going to send to the blue cube called Rotate10. But it's not going to do it automatically. It's, I have to control what the message does through the, the ray state one script. If this was just an AND controller, if it got within two units, then it would actually send the message. But if you run a Python script in between here, then you actually have to do it within the code. You have to actually check and activate this actuator in order or act, yeah, this message actuator, you have to activate it within the code in order for it to send the message. And it sounds like it gets more complicated. Well, maybe it is a little bit, but that's really where the power of Python and the logic bricks and everything come into play. And so there's another thing that's going on in here is a couple things. This uh, I have a timer, but it's called ray clock right here. And I'm looking for the interval between 5 and 10 seconds. And when it finds that interval, it comes down here and it's going to switch over to state 2 this other layer and if you see on this other layer I have a similar setup except it's actually running a separate piece of code because if I deactivated the first state then race state 1 would be running so I have race state 2 that's running that it has to check and I also have a different clock in here that's checking for between 14 and 17 seconds and it switches back and you can see what's different in race state in this layer here is the the message I'm sending is rotate 20 degrees versus rotate 10 degrees. It actually rotates the message for the blue cube that it's trying to receive is that rotate 10 if it receives it rotates 10 in positive and rotate 20 rotates negative 20 degrees on Z like that. So if I just run the code real quick and that was between what did I say 5 and 10 seconds right that it switches states Oh, no, let me see. Here's I'm going to start on this state. You have to, you have to, if you want to start it on the state one, you have to click that button right there. All right, so then, yeah, this just shows you where you are in the scene, but this is actually where it's going to start is on there. So it's on this first one, it says that at five to ten seconds, it'll switch states, and that's where it'll ro start rotating at 20. So I'm going to start it up. And at five seconds in, which we're going to see on the clock, because right here I have debug pressed like this. And if you come up here to the game and you show debug properties, we're going to get the clock up here at the top left of the screen. So I'm going to run it, and I'm going to just move this into place. And there it is. You'll notice there's my clock three, four, five seconds, and then it starts rotating really quickly in the other direction. All right, so it gives you a lot of control as far as how you can. I'll just run it again so you can see that clock running. It's rotating on 10 degrees increments. Gets to 5 seconds, it rotates on 20. And then it switches back when it gets to 14 seconds or something like that. Between four, Yeah, there it is, at 14 seconds it switches back. So I'm basically switching states back and forth in here. So that gives you a lot of power with these this finite state machine in here. I really dig it. But kind of at this point forward these lessons get a little more complicated they're certainly far from beginning lessons at this point because even though I have a, a whole series of Python tutorials for the game engine and for blender render those are basic introductory Python tutorials and I've labeled them as such basic or introductory and the reason being is that those are kind of quick hacks global variables just it's kind of a quick and easy way to get you using the system without having to be get caught up in all the details of using Python because py Python when used correctly is a little tricky and because it, it's a it's a challenging language but it's a powerful language so I cover that more in the intermediate and advanced tutorials and, and as well that I cover a lot more math and physics and much more advanced simulations in my tutorials because you just can't do it all at once. Right from the very beginning, it's very difficult to try and learn programming, math and physics, Blender, all the Python code and everything at the same time. So that'll be coming up here in the near future. All right, well, that's it for now, and I'll see you in the next lesson.